Hey, hey, party people. Y'all loved Bellu's video, Three Gorgeous Scenes. I'll link it below. You loved her video so much that I asked her to make another video for us, another sewing video. So today she's going to show us how to sew two different pockets. And they're rather complex pockets, not, not your basic, like, put a patch on it and sew around it pocket. And she's going to show you so many tips and tricks and, you know, ways to make things more beautiful, more precise, inside and out, couture finishing techniques. You know, if you watched the last video, then you know that Bello comes from many years working in product development for brands such as Burberry and Karl Lagerfeld and of course her own company now ABC Scenes. I'm going to drop links to all her stuff in the comments or in the description box below and I urge you to follow her on Instagram and check out all her stuff by her book. I cannot endorse this complete fountain of knowledge that is Bellu enough and uh you know we didn't have time to do the third pocket because she was going over these two pockets in so much detail if you want a well pockets video please do drop a comment in the comment section below and lastly i am dying to get bello to do her own youtube channel i think it, it'll be a huge success i think it'll be so helpful for all kinds of designers and makers and so if you want to see a YouTube channel from Bello, please drop a note of encouragement in the comment section below. And I want to show it to her and be like, look, everybody wants a channel from you. <laughs> All right. So please watch this video on pockets. You are going to learn so much, whether you're a beginner or advanced. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Hi, guys. Welcome to Soy's channel. Today, in this video, we are going to make two pockets, a patch pocket and a side pocket. They are not standard pocket. We wanted to make them more challenging, more original, so we add them some interesting details. And what is interesting about these pockets is that, on one hand, we are going to learn or practice different sewing techniques that we can apply to other parts of the garment. For example, we are here this patch pocket, we are adding a band. So this technique, you can apply it on a cuff, the edge of a collar, a neckline, a bottom, different parts. And on the other hand, for those of you that are designers, but you don't usually sew, that is very normal, that happens a lot. This is going to be useful too, because when you deeply understand how it's made, you have more ideas, you are more creative and not it's just that, but you explain, you can explain better your ideas to your factory, your suppliers and your colleagues. And that is really priceless. At first, I would like to talk about pockets in general. What is a pocket? A pocket is a kind of pack that is part of the clothing or the product. And the original purpose of pockets was a functional purpose. And it was hold or transport personal items. But nowadays, the purpose can be functional, same as the beginning, or decorative. So the functional purpose, we use them to carry small items. And then I would like to add, we use them to keep your hands warm, especially for winter clothing. And then the decorative purpose is just like the name says, it's decorative. And we recognize them because they are usually small, or the position is uncomfortable to use, or they can be just fake pockets. So it's about their construction too. But beside the purpose, pockets are part of the garment. So then they are always part of the design process. And that means that designers have to think about the look, the performance and the construction. Now, we have many types of pockets. But in general, looking at pockets from a big picture, we have three big groups. And that is the classification of the pocket. And we have the patch pocket, which is a piece of fabric that is applied onto the garment or the product. Then we have the seam pockets. Seam pockets are those that the opening of the pocket falls along the seam. That is an option. Or we have the other one that the opening is placed from one seam to another seam. And then we have the set in or inset pockets. And those pockets are made by cutting an opening in the garment. And usually that is the main panel of the garment. Now, placements and sizes. They mainly depend on the design, the type of clothing, and the purpose of the pocket. 
they can be small, really small, or they can be huge, and you can place them anywhere. We really have no limits here. But when we talk about standard pockets, the common placements are the chest area at the front and the hip area, front and back. And regarding standard sizes, you need to consider the minimum opening length to fit and slide your hand in and out easily. So the minimum standards are just for hand fitting. And there is a small variation depending on the angle of the pocket. And the last thing to mention about pockets in general is about quality. Quality can be related to several aspects. Some of them are closer to high ends, and we are going to see something about that. And other aspects are related to durability. So when a pocket is functional, the opening area is considered as a high level of stress area. So you as a designer or as a product developer, you have to consider how to reinforce the length and the corners. There are many techniques that you can apply and we are going to see some of them in this video. As we said, a patch pocket is a piece of fabric that we apply on the garment. And the most basic patch pocket is the simplest and the easiest pocket in the world. What happens is that we can make it more and more complex. They can feature different shapes, different type of details, and different type of closures for extra security. This is the most versatile pocket, and maybe for that reason, it is the most popular too. Now, let's compare a standard patch pocket with this particular patch pocket. Let's start for the shape. A standard patch pocket is just a simple rectangle. So we have to stitch straight lines and corners. But with sew a patch pocket, we are going to practice how to sew curves and corners too. So we have two techniques here. Now let's see the construction. A standard opening is made by folding back the edge twice. Most of the times you will see a single top stitch, but on jeans, for example, you are going to see a double top stitch often too. Now our pocket has a facing on the inside, so it makes it stronger and more stable. And then a half of an inch beyond the edge, we have a single top stitch, and then we have this band along the edge. So the challenge here is getting an even and flat construction. We are going to do that. Then the ends. You will see a simple fold edge most of the time, exactly the same as you do on the sides of the pockets. But our pocket, we are going to finish the ends by a couture technique. So the look is going to be pristine outside and inside. And then we are going to reinforce them by practicing how to make a bar tag. And lastly, the sides. Instead of attaching the pocket by a simple edge stitch, our pocket has a double top stitch. So that's a good excuse to practice how to use a double needle on a curve, and that is challenging. We have several steps uh, to do this pocket, to make this pocket, and what I did is I uh, organized those steps in three stages. So the free first stage, we are going to work on the opening. So we are going to apply the facing and the band. And then the second stage, it's stage, sorry, we are going to prepare the pocket to attach it. And the third stage, we are going to attach the pocket and then finish the corners. I've already cut out the pieces. So we have the base of the pocket, the pocket piece and the facing. And this is the band. Now I've already marked the notches and the placement marks. Now the facing. What I did first, I adjust the pattern so that I make sure it's going to lie flat. I show you how I did that. Okay, here are the pocket piece and the facing together. So I get the facing and then I reduce the length of the bottom by one eighth of an inch in total. That is three or four millimeters. So now I know the facing is not showing up on the right side. Then I apply the interfacing already. Now the interfacing is part of the pattern. We take the facing without the seam allowance and that is the pattern for the interfacing. Please, I'm serious now, don't do this. Eh? Please don't apply the facing with the seam allowance. That is very lazy, but also the problem is that you make the seams the seam bulkier. So it's going to be like too heavy because you are adding layers to the seam. 
And the last thing I did with the facing, I already fold over the seam allowance and place it flat. This is the bottom edge. Now we already need a band like this one. It's fold in the middle. I made this one and it needs, needs to be twice the seam allowance plus a quarter of an inch, which is five millimeters. You've, and you fold it in right in the middle, you press it already. I cut it on the bias, but when the seam is straight, like this pocket, you don't need to cut it on the bias, you can cut it on the grain if you want. And finally, I cut out this cardboard template that we are going to use to get a smooth shape and to be sure that the pocket is symmetrical. Same as we did with the interfacing, we are going to take the, the pocket pattern, the pocket piece pattern, without the seam allowance, and that is the template. Now, once we have all the pieces ready like that, we're gonna start sewing. So we have the pocket piece wrong side back, and first we are going to base stitch the band along the opening. We are lining up the raw edges, and then pin them together. Now, here is the seam allowance. So we need to base a stitch inside of it. And that stitch is going to be perfectly aligned with this side of the band. So to do that, I'm lining up this side of the, my presser foot with this edge. And the needle, I move it to the left. Now that I'm sewing, I'm just paying attention to the band. I'm focusing right here. And I'm also softly pulling the band backwards to avoid wavy edges. Next, we are attaching the facing. I pin it right side together and turn it over so we can see the previous stitch. And this is two or three millimeters, okay? And here is the seam allowance. So I use this stitch as a guide for the next final stitch. This inner side is lined up with this stitch. And the needle is still on the left side. And here it is, the facing and the band. And now we are going to stitch the sides of the facings, here and here. It's really important that the edges are perfectly aligned. I place the needle in the center again, and there we go. Once the facing is attached to the pocket, we need to trim away all the bulkiness. I start with the corners, make sure you cut about three millimeters beyond this point, and then down here. And again, we leave about three millimeters, that is almost one eighth of an inch. And then up here, all along, and back again. Here it is. And now we turn the facing right side out, like that. The corners. and then we press it flat. We should check that the sides of the facing are slightly inwards when pressing. I also roll out the fabric like that, using my fingers. And here it is, a cute tiny band, a neat flight facing. Now we are going to fold over the seam allowance. But first, we base stitch the curves. Okay, here we have the seam allowance and we are basting here, right in the middle. Make sure you leave enough thread at both ends and do not secure the stitch. Remember, these stitches are long stitches and the tension of the thread is really low. And here we have it, the bastings, the tails to pull, and now we are going to use the cardboard template to fold over the seam allowance. 
slide the template inside the facing and to the top and the seam allowance has to be even. Now we can start pulling this way. You will see the thread underneath, it works better than the one on the right side. A little bit more from here again, and we do the same on the other side. Once the template fits well, we first iron the curve like that. Make sure you have a beautiful smooth shape and perfectly even. And then to finish this point, we press one side like that. Make sure you get to the tip of it. And then we press the other side over it. Now we can get the template out. Make sure you have a nice shape here and here. Next, we clip here inside the corner. We leave about two or three millimeters here. And then we fold it down like that and press flat. Now we need to get rid of these gutters. So we are going to notch both sides. Don't worry at all if you cut the basting, but just make sure you don't get to the crease line. Now we're gonna stitch along here, so we get a top stitch here on the right side. I'll pin the facing just to make sure it is steady and flat. We come back to the previous setting, so my stitch length was 3.3 .3 and the thread tension was 4.2. So now we just run a stitch along the folded edge of the facing. We can hold the other side like that, making sure that the facing is not showing up. And with my other hand, I keep the facing flat. And my eyes are on this area. This edge lines up with this point inside the foot. And here we have it. So to finish, we are going to pin the pocket matching the placement marks. I'll double check. And we now, we are going to pin it all around. At this point, it is key that the curves and corners look even and smooth. If you see any pointy shape or whatever you don't like, you can always take the template again and repeat these steps until you are happy with your pocket. Okay, I've already pinned the pocket on. It looks like that. Now, to finish it, I'm going to stitch from this top down here, pivot and come back to the top here. And at the very end, we are going to reinforce this area. If the garment has lining, I suggest you add a piece of fabric or interfacing like this one here at the back so you make the ends even stronger. So I've already set up the double needle. I did a stitching test on a scrap of fabric and I adjusted the thread tension first. Now this needle on the left is going to edge stitch the pocket here. So our attention when sewing is there. This first section is easy, but the tricky part starts here. Let's start. I use the seam ripper to keep the seam in place and flat, like that. Okay, now the fun starts. <laughs> so to follow the cord with the needle down, we are going to pivot this way. We have to do this very carefully and kindly.
Beside the seam ripper, I lift the presser foot to help me to move the fabric and to keep the edge lying flat. But it's really important when you do this that the needle is always down. And when you get to this tip here, the right needle will go beyond the center. But this point is where we want to get. That's the target. Okay, we are right on the corner. And now I'm going to lift the needle and the presser foot very carefully. Then pivot the fabric. Then take down the foot and make sure the needle next to the edge is exactly on the same point. Now the bar tags and that's all for this pocket. First I did my stitching test. We need to check the thread tension and the stitching length and width. There are three layers of fabric here. Four layers will be okay too, but not less than three. So same as the pocket. Then we mark the length on the pocket and we are going to stitch from here to here. The key here is placing the zigzag stitch exactly in the middle of the previous stitch. And then we do the same on the other side. Okay, here we have our special patch pocket. The facing looks flat, strong and clean. Also on the inside, here we have the bar tags and the curve and corners. We can see at the back a kind of zigzag because this is a regular sewing machine. But when you use an industrial sewing machine or when you ask for this pocket to a factory, you are not going to see that stitch. You are going to see two top stitches, same as on the front. Those are special sewing machines. And we also have an even band on the top. Okay, guys, this pocket is done. Let's start the second one. So now we are going to start the side pocket, the second pocket. So what is a side pocket? A side pocket is a type of seam pocket that is placed under the waist, on the front, and we place it from the waist seam to the side seam. So from here to here. We also recognize this pocket because we have a main panel and it's showing but another piece which is the side piece and they together complete the front. These pieces are showing by a pocket bag like this one and it's usually made of lining. You will see this pocket mainly on pants and a skirt and most of the time they are functional. Now, side pockets can be slightly different depending on the shape. Let's see the open. It can be curved or straight, and the angle goes from flat to vertical. These are the most common shapes, and we are going to make the curved side pocket, just because it's more challenging. And then the back, the pocket back. These two are the most popular shapes, and you will also see this one on formal pants with vertical opening. And then here at the bottom, the shape can be basic or ergonomic. And that one is usually the most comfortable and the better quality. And that one is the one that we choose for this pocket today. Now, let's compare a standard curved side pocket with our special pocket. Okay, the shape from the outside is quite the same. But let's see the construction. On the opening, you mostly see this seam with double top stitch. But our pocket has a basic top stitch and an under stitch here on the inside which helps stopping the lining rolling out of the pocket. So here we have four options. You already know how to do the double top stitch. Then we are going to make this seam and you can use either the under stitch or the basic top stitch separately. And then we have the side piece of the pocket. So you will usually see either this one, the cheapest with an overlock and a top stitch or this one, 
which is better quality and is similar to the one that we used to attach the patch box. But our pocket has a band as a decorative detail. So it means we can use that detail on a patch pocket too. And here we are practicing how to add a band on a cord evenly. And then we have the edge of the pocket bag. A standard pocket will have the edges finished by a 5 thread overlock stitch. That is the easiest, the quickest and the cheapest option. Or this finishing, much cleaner than the other one. The construction of that finishing is exactly the same as the French seam. The only difference is that at the end you don't open it. But the finishing that we are using today is a high-end finishing. We are polishing the edge by using a bias binding. And the goal here is getting a clean finishing at the end and an even flat line along the edge. If you are a beginner and this technique is too advanced, what you can do, you can change the shape of the pocket bag and make it easier by avoiding the corner. So you still have a high-end finishing and it's not that complicated. I just give you option and you choose. Now, again, what I did, I organized the steps in three stages. So first we are going to attach the side piece to the pocket bag. Then we are going to attach the main piece to the pocket bag here at the opening. And then at the end, we are going to close the pocket bag here at the bottom line. Okay, I already cut out all the pieces that we need to make this pocket. Here we have the main panel, the side panel or side piece, and the pocket bag. I already applied a stay tape along the opening edge of the pocket bag. Remember, the opening is cut off grain, so they are unstable, and that is why we are applying the stay tape over the seam allowance, because then we are going to stitch over it. Now, if you would like to see the right side of the lining on the inside of the garment, then you need to apply the stay tape on the right side, same as we did here. We need a band too, and same as the one that we use on the patch pocket, this band is going to be twice the seam allowance plus a quarter of an inch, that is five millimeters, and this one is cut on the bias. We need to cut it on the bias because it's going to be applied on a cord. I fold it in the middle already, and then we need a bias binding like this one. The width of this bias binding is an inch, is one inch, and that is 2.5 centimeters. And we are going to fold it right in the middle exactly as we did with the band. And that's all what we need to make this pocket. Let's start. So here we have the side piece facing up and the band. First we saw a basting stitch along the curve just to hold the band and the side piece together. I'm lining up the band with this edge, which is the curved edge of the piece. And here we have the seam allowance and the basting stitch is going to be here. As long as I'm sewing, I'm helping the side piece to follow the shape of the edge with my left hand. And the band, I pull it backward gently with the right hand. So then the band is not going to look wavy. Now we are ready to stitch the real seam allowance, which is very close to this edge. So the goal here is to get a perfectly even stitch at 2 or 3 millimeters beyond the edge of the band, which is the seam allowance. To do that, we line up this inner edge of the foot to this edge and move the needle to the left. And when I'm sewing, I never look at the needle. For this step, my attention is going to be focused there at the foot edge and here at the band. So with my right hand, I'm slightly pulling that way. And with my left hand, this one, I help to pivot like that. Now, let's suppose in this area we miss it up and the stitch is not even. So here we have both stitches. This part is okay, but here is the uneven area. So we want to fix it right now. We start just before the stitch went out of the pad here. And again, this edge lines up here at the foot.
and here we have it, already fixed. Now we are going to fold it back and then press it like that. But these gutters, we need to get rid of this bulk. So we can notch the cord this way all along the edge, or we can trim off the seam allowance. We leave about a quarter of an inch, that is about 5 millimeters. And no problems if you cut the basting stitch, that's okay. And now we can press it flat. When you do this step, make sure you unroll the fabric like that with your fingers, because what we want is that the band shows up evenly. Okay, once we get it like that, we can pin it onto the pocket bag. Remember, we want to see the right side of the lining facing out on the inner side of the garment. We are going to place this piece with the right side facing back like that. And then we place the side piece on top and we stitch here. And then we pin it. I match up the notches. Then just make sure here is flat. So now we're going to stitch along here. So here is going to be the new stitch. I move the needle back to the center. And there we go. So again, when you stitch this type of curve with this hand, the right one, you press and pivot that way, making sure it is always flat. And here too. Okay. Here is the edge stitch, and now we are going to base stitch this side here and here. So that's the seam allowance, and this new stitch is going to be here in the middle. Make sure the edges line up. Then pivot here at the corner and keep sewing. So here are the pocket bag and the side piece sewn together. And now we are going to attach it to the main piece, right here at the opening edge. So the wrong side is facing back and we place the bag facing up. Now check both sides are aligned and the notches are matching up too. I pinned the opening already, and the seam allowance is here in the middle of the stay tape, so we stitch all along this line. Now, to stitch this curve, I'm again pivoting this way. I'm not pulling nor stretching the edge. I'm just pressing and pivoting. And I'm following this mark here, so I know the seam allowance is always even. So here it is. And what we are doing now, we open out the back piece like that, to there, the right side, all of it. And making sure the seam allowance is always lying on the right side too. We are going to edge stitch along this line on the pocket bag. Now the seam line here is aligned with this part of the foot, right here inside. I flatten here and check that the seam allowance is there underneath. I hold the bag like that, and again helping with my hands to follow the shape. Not pulling, just helping. And here is the understitch. But before the next step, we need to clip the curve like that, leaving an eighth of an inch from the stitch. So here are the notches. Now we place the main piece like that, right side facing back. 
and then we take the pocket bag and bring it over this way. And now we are going to press this edge. When you press it, make sure you fold it, bringing just a tiny bit of the main fabric like that. And now we are going to stitch all along here and we'll see it here. I've just pinned the opening edge and this is going to be the basic top stitch here. But I prefer sewing with the lighter fabric on top. And this mark is going to line up along this edge. Here is the basic top stitch, and now we are going to fold in half the pocket bag. This notch here points the fold line, so round sides are facing together. And I match up all the notches, making sure that everything is flat, lining up here and here too. I just pin the sides together. And now we are going to work on this edge. We base the pocket back first, I pin it here and here, and then we apply the bias binding all along. So that's the seam allowance, and again, here is where we are going to base a stitch. And here it is. Now we get the bias binding, and the first thing is working on the end here and here. So we fold it facing the right sides like that. It's important it is fold exactly in the middle. And then we stitch here, shorter stitches. So I carefully place it under the presser foot and then stitch it. Then again, so it's a stronger. Now we clean it and trim away the excess of fabric this way. Again, when we clip here, leave about two or three millimeters beyond the stitch. Then we turn it right side out. And here we want a nice angled tip. Now we put it in place and make sure the seam allowance is underneath. We need to do this very carefully here. And then pin it just there. Now we are going to stitch here at the edge, so we'll see it on both sides. And this edge has to be always aligned here at the foot when sewing. We also are checking that the pocket back edge is lining up the crease line here. So as long as I sew, I gently place it inside like that and without pulling the pocket back edge at all. And here is the edge of the pocket bag. After iron it, this is going to look flat. And the back side. Now to finish this pocket, we base the stitch here and here. Always perfectly aligned and flat. So here is the side pocket already finished. We have here inside, we have the band, big brands, top brands. They use this kind of construction or and finishes a lot. I love them. And then here we have the basic top stitch outside and the under stitch inside. We have a strong opening 
and then the inside the lining is facing out and then we have the edge here and here we attach the rivets after finishing the garment and the standard size for the rivets for pants is nine millimeters that is linge 14. so to finish this video this tutorial i just would like to add that if you especially if you are a beginner you better use a structured fabric like medium weight structured fabric not too soft not too slippery because you are just going to feel frustrated and when we were talking with Zoe about this video we were organizing what i was going to do she asked me for three pockets so the third pocket was a weld pocket but i didn't include that pocket because i thought it was going to be too much information here we have a lot to do now so what i proposed so is ask you if you think this is useful let us know in the comments below and i promise i will do that video for you okay so i hope this was helpful for you guys i tried to make it the most complete way that i could and you will see so in the next video Ciao.